Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at theming in Material UI and React and how you can create your own custom theme in your React app using Material UI's theme provider and make theme. Theming is a very important part of your application, especially if you're using Material UI. A lot of the times you're going to want to customize your application depending on whether you're building it for yourself or a client to match your colors, typographies, spacings, breakpoints, and all that other good stuff. Just a reminder, if you like this video and you find value in it, please consider giving it a thumbs up, leaving a comment below, or subscribing. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and it really helps get the channel out there to a lot more people. Now, if we go to Material UI's default theme, what you need to know is every time you use a basic Material UI component, such as this button component, whenever you don't override the theme and you give it a property, something like color equals primary, that primary or all these variants and all the text that will um, be inside the component is actually pulling from the Material UI's default theme. So here is a page where we can look at the Material UI default theme and we can look at some of the values. So let's go ahead and look at these categories. Well, the first category we have is breakpoints, then we have mixins, palette, shadows, typography, spacing, shape, transitions, and set index. The specific ones we're going to be looking at for today are breakpoints, palette, and typography. If we open up breakpoint, you can see here that we have a couple of different breakpoints. We have extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. And if we look at the values object, we can see that each one of these keys aligns to a certain number. What this number is, is essentially your screen size in width for when that screen is considered extra large, large, medium, small, or extra small. For example, if your screen is above XL, if your screen is above a 1920 in width, this screen is going to be considered extra large. And when you use materialized breakpoints in your code and your screen is that size, more specifically your browser is that size, it will add whatever properties it needs to as if the screen was XL. If it is between 1280 and 1920, it is considered large. If it's between 960 and 1280, medium, etc., etc. The smallest you can have is extra small, which is a screen ranging from 0 to 600. Now, I haven't seen much use cases for anyone needing to change these default values for the breakpoints, although a lot of com big companies will have their own custom grid sizing and their own custom breakpoints, and that's when you would want to change it. And most of these breakpoints are usually used for things like a uh, grid. Um, if you're not familiar with how grid works and everything like that, I will also have a video probably next week coming out on grid. But that's what most of these breakpoints are used for. You can use custom stylings for all your CSS um, within make styles. And also, if you use uh, this thing, which we are going to touch on a bit later in the video called use theme, you can also actually vary your JSX based on anything a part of your theme, including breakpoints. So the next thing is palette. This is pretty much every single color that is in your application. You can see here in this button, I set the color to primary. If I were to remove that, you would see it would just be a default gray color. But because I set it to primary, it turns into this blue um, this bluish color. Now, where is it getting that from? Well, we can see here inside of palette, we have a bunch of different colors, and one of them is primary. If we open primary, we can see that the primary object has three different variations. We have main, light, and dark, and also this contrast text. Um, but really, main, light, and dark are the main focuses. Whenever you set something to primary, it's going to set it to whatever the main is. This light and dark is for if you were to, for example, um, you can see the Material UI site. Um, if I were to come over here, whoops, if I were to come over here, I can toggle light and dark. You'll see that when it's on dark mode, it's actually going to pull from the um, dark uh, default themes. I accidentally moved everything over, but you can see. Um, if I go back into palette, everything will have for primary a light and a dark. So a lot of applications, uh, if you wanted to create, you know, a little uh, light and dark mode for your website, um, Material UI's basic themes already have all the colors for light and dark mode uh, saved in. And it's just a matter of passing in um, dark mode into your theme, which we will also show. Um, in this video as well. So the next thing we want to look at is typography. So typography is where everything is being kept. And 
we can see here that, for example, this button text, um, the, the text for it is, is actually in Roboto, the font family is Roboto, and then it has some other fallback fonts like Helvetia and Arial and Sans Serif, the standard ones. And you can see here, if I were to go ahead and import typography and actually create a typography component, and let's say, um, oops, this is my typography. If I were to set the variant to, oh, uh, did I spell that right? Typography. Oh, I imported it from the wrong path. <clears throat> right, so we can see here, this is my typography. If I were to set the variant equals to H1, we'll see that it takes on all the styles that is in this H1 object for our typography. Oops, um, and that if you wanted to, for example, maybe the company you're working for has their own separate typography variants, and I've been in that situation before. You can either choose to go with the same naming uh, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, or you can make your own typography variants and add the styles to them in your theme, which I've done in my uh, typography video last week. So if you're interested in doing like that, something like that, uh, just check out that typography video. But that's the gist of it um, for the default theme. So let's go ahead and see how we can actually make our own theme. If we go to the theming page in Material UI, you'll see here that pretty much whenever you want to pass a theme in, you use a theme provider. And theme providers are pretty basic. Um, providers in general are a pretty basic um, concept in React. Pretty much when you, wrap, when you wrap your application around a provider, what it does is it gives every single component um, that is nested within your application access to any variable that is sort of within that theme provider um, or within that provider itself. So um, if you've ever used Redux before, you'll also see that it's used there as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and import theme provider, wrap it around my app, but you'll see here we need to pass in this variable called theme. Well, this is where we can actually create our theme and overwrite some of the default themes. So um, let's look for an example where they use uh, the actual create theme, and here it is. So what they do is they call theme, they say theme is equal to create a um, movie theme, and within that function they pass in a map. And you'll see that this map that they're actually passing in is pretty much the same as um, whatever you want to overwrite, it's pretty much the same as the way the actual default theme is structured. So in this case they're overwriting uh, in within palette the primary and secondary colors. Um, and you can see palette is at the top level of the theme object, and then so is uh, primary and secondary. Now something that's really interesting to note, if we were to try doing something like this, so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and import our theme or create our theme. Let's get rid of the status danger. We don't want to overwrite that for now. We can see here that when they overwrite our palette, our primary and secondary, this purple and green is actually getting imported um, from Material UI's colors. Now let's see what happens. Let's just do primary for now. If we try to um, set primary to a specific color that's not from one of Material UI's. So let's just set primary, I don't know, to uh, green in quotes like that. Um, We'll see here that we get a uh, error that the main property is invalid, and that is because when you add a color to your palette in Material UI, it has to have a main property, sort of like how we saw in this um, in this uh, palette example in the default uh, object. We can see here main was equal to this, and the reason for this is because um, every time Material UI Material has a custom uh, a couple of custom built in. Um, like I said, light and dark and main themes, and it needs a variant. So right now we're not like setting the theme to dark or anything. Um, so it's looking for the main variant of this color. And the reason you didn't need to add this in this example is because when you actually import the color green from Material UI's green, what you don't see on the back in the in the in the background is that this green is actually an object that contains um, a light, uh, sorry, a main, a light, and a dark version of it. Um, so if we wanted to just add our own custom green, we would have to make this another object and say main, and then just put green like that. <clears throat> and you'll see that our button will now, um, oh, so it looks like it wants an actual hex value. So let's just say CCC, CCC, which I believe is like um, some offshoot of gray. Yeah, so we can see here now primary is some offshoot of gray. And I think if we wanted to make it, you know, FFF, FFF, 
um, obviously that color would be white and then obviously 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is the hex uh, value for black. So we're pretty much just setting, um, and I don't know if you noticed, but that was a really nice thing that happened. As soon as we set the color of this button to black, the text automatically um, changed to white, which is just another really cool um, feature of Matillui's themes. It sort of has this, um, if nothing's been overwritten, it sort of has this dynamic checking to make sure that each component is displayed uh, correctly and things like having black on black for button and text doesn't happen. So we've seen how we can overwrite some of the um, some of the properties of the palette. So let's go ahead and just import their green and purple um, from Material UI colors uh, just to make things a bit faster and simpler for us. And we can go ahead and set primary equal to green. Um, and by the way, what I see a lot of if, if you're working on an application that has a lot of different themes, and let's say the theme that the user is choosing is um, based on a reducer value, so for example, like if there's a button up here or a setting or something within their profile, um, I would recommend just storing all of these themes in like a themes file or something. It's a lot more clean, uh, but for this example, we're just going to go ahead and use it here. So we can set the uh, primary to green and secondary. We can set that to purple. And now if I come back in my button, let's copy this button, let's make another one, except let's set the uh, color to secondary. And you'll see this button ends up being purple. And uh, just like the last time, uh, the text sort of changes um, to make it as visible as possible. Black on purple uh, would not look too well. And that's pretty much how you overwrite uh, theme values. We can also do the same thing for typography values and um, the breakpoints that we looked at before. Let's look at how we can use a uh, theme now in our actual um, in our actual. Uh, make styles over here. So if you're not familiar with make styles, I have a whole video on it and I touched on make styles uh, in my last last week's video as well um, and how to use theme with it. But essentially, if you wanted to style things based on breakpoints, for example, let's say when the screen is really small, I want this button specifically um, to be black and when the screen is really big, I want this, cotton, this button to be um, blue, uh, the background of it to be blue, uh, there's ways to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is let's create a style for uh, our button specifically. So we can call this like button style or just button, it's up to you. Um, and in here we're going to be passing in a theme. And the way we're going to do that is pretty much up here in the make styles tag, we can add theme here and then return another, um, return pretty much another map. Um, and then in our actual, so wherever we want to actually use the theme, um, and in this case we're using it with the breakpoints, uh, we can do something like this. So what this will do is when we have this in here, it'll say whatever is within this object right here um, will be applied when the theme's breakpoint is small or up. And we can see here, if we go back to the default uh, theme object, the theme's, oh, whoops, um, the theme object uh, the, the breakpoint for small and up is pretty much just 600 pixels wide and up. So I can say background color is uh, black when the screen is above 600 pixels. And then when it is below it, um, let's make the background color to blue. And finally, let's apply our style to our actual button. So we say button and then um, class name equals classes dot and then background color. Oh, sorry. Um, button. That's what we named it. And if we were to save it, you would see here now, um, you would see here the background color when the screen is bigger than 600 pixels is black. And if I were to move the screen smaller, um, it is now smaller than 600 pixels, it becomes blue. The last thing that I think is really useful to know about theming is the use theme hook. So let's go ahead and import it. So we're going to import it from styles again and not from uh, just slash core. So the story behind um, the whole slash core and slash styles thing is that Material UI used to have, used to import all of these things from Material UI dash, uh, Material dash UI slash styles. Um, and then when they did a huge uh, overhaul on all these styles components and hooks and everything like that, they moved it all into um, slash core slash styles. So a lot of times if you're getting any, I've, I've been in a situation where um, I've been importing all this stuff from just material UI slash styles um, and 
it's been giving me a lot of errors and stuff like that. And that's because I was using the deprecated versions um, instead of slash core slash style. So just uh, that's a really good check to have. Make sure you're importing anything related to style. So make styles, use theme, um, and then back here, um, create MUI theme and theme provider from core slash styles and not just styles. But anyways, um, what this uh, use theme hook allows you to do is it allows you to actually get the theme object within your um, JSX, which is useful for a couple of different reasons. Um, if we were to see here, I'm pretty much using the hook and I'm going to console.log it. And if I look at the console, we have pretty much the entire giant um, theme. Uh, we have the entire uh, giant theme object um, that we have created. And a good thing to also note is notice how we still have all the default breakpoints. We still have like default colors for pretty much everything uh, other than what we overwritten. And that's how um, create theme will work when you're in your index and you use the um, create MUI theme. It will only overwrite the things that you pass in from the, t from the default. Um, that way you don't lose things like breakpoints and stuff like that and, and spacings and other random small stuff that you might not want to overwrite. So, um, and yeah, this is pretty much how you use use theme. Um, we can get anything we want from this theme object. This might be, uh, if you're trying to specifically render an element based on like, for example, the um, breakpoint that you're currently in and you don't want to do it with grid or anything like that. But that's pretty much the gist of it. Let's go ahead and remove all of um, the uh, palette overrides we did here and let's remove all of these imports and actually for palette um, the last thing that I want to show you is um, how to change the type so if you remember I said that you could switch it to dark mode anything anytime you want if you add dark uh, to the palette type you'll see that oh and let's get rid of our um, let's get rid of our stylings that we added to the button um, yeah, so if we set pretty much uh, the type to dark, you'll see that we are now in dark theme. And it, you can't really see it right now, but if I were to remove this root um, and I were to uh, use a paper. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the paper component, I'll have a video uh, releasing pretty soon for that as well. Um, but paper is essentially just a background color. Um, but as you can see, um, when the, the theme is dark, um, when the type is dark, paper uh, turns to black, but when the theme is normal, paper is just white and it has a little border around it and all the text inside of it is black. Um, so if you wanted to create an app, a material UI application from scratch and you wanted your site to be in dark theme, all, all you have to do is overwrite the type of the palette to dark and everything will already be in a nice dark theme just like it is on the site. That's all for the video. Uh, once again, if you liked it, please consider subscribing, um, leaving a comment below on what you'd like to see next, what I can improve on, um, and or liking the video really helps with the algorithm. So I hope you guys have a good day. Hope everyone's staying safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.